Okay. <laughs> we had some technical difficulties the first time around. I'm gonna try and see if it is fixed this time. Also, sorry, my chair is super squeaky. Let's see if we can get him in this time. Yes. So I just requested Franklin to go live. Um, hi. Hi. Okay, it it worked now. out. <laughs> Here we are. Here we oh are. Oh my gosh. All the stress on Instagram. This is like the second time that that's happened to me. That's crazy. I know. I mean, I've only done this a handful of times and it's been a while ago. So you're going to have to teach me a thing or two. Okay, I got you. <laughs> um, I'm so excited we're doing this. It's been a long time coming, at least for me. Um, yes. Obviously, I know. I know everything you do. What? I was just going to say, we've been talking about it for a while. So it's, it's great that it's actually happening now. I know. I'm super excited. Um, I was going to say, obviously, I know what you do and I know about you. But I would love for you to just tell everybody a little bit of background about you, how you got into the industry, and like what you do on a day to day as a model scout. Yeah, for sure. For sure. So I have been the women's scout at Wilhelmina for um, <laughs> about two years now, a little over two years. Um, but I have been scouting for um, about eight or nine. And I, all, I was that kid that always knew I wanted to be in fashion. And I grew up in Charlotte, North Carolina. Um, you know, it's, it's not necessarily a fashion capital, but, right. um, there's, there's a little bit of fashion here and, uh, one thing ended up leading to another and I got an internship with, um, someone who casted in, produced, um, some, some shows for Oscar de la Renta and some oh, other wow. designers. And so as soon as I had that experience of, you know, being backstage at a runway show and seeing professional models and, and the fashion come to life, I was like, I have to be a part of this. Yeah. <laughs> um, it, it was so exciting. It was so glamorous. I was like, yes, this is what I need to do with my career. Um, my oh family. My yeah. My, my mom and my dad were always like, you know, find something that you're passionate about and, you know, you won't work a day in your life. So um, I stuck with that and just kind of dabbled in a few things in fashion. I dabbled in styling and production, casting. Um, and actually, um, someone who was a former director at Wilhelmina, uh, Roman Young, he, yeah. yes, he uh, kind of was a mentor for me at the beginning of my career when it came to the modeling side, modeling industry side of stuff. And, um, you know, encouraged me to, to scout models in the Southeast and North Carolina and South Carolina and Georgia. Yeah. And, um, I found one girl who he signed to Wilhelmina. And um, from there, I just you know, was was trying to figure out what works in, in the industry. Um, so I would send him and a number of other agents in, um, in the industry, you know, do you think this girl could work for your agency? Do you think, what do you think about this guy? And um, from there, that's kind of how my eye was trained for what, what works in different markets. Um, so I was scouting the Southeast, but... I was placing models in New York, LA, Miami, Europe, Asia. So um, just through all those years dabbling in, in um, some different different parts of the industry is kind of where I ended up at Wilhelmina, where Helen, our women's director, called yeah. me and she said, you know, would you consider moving to New York full time and scouting for us full time? And um you know, we had a few conversations and it just ended up um, being a perfect fit. And I'm so happy, you know, to, to work at Wilhelmina and yeah. work with girls like you. I mean, we have, we have yeah. an amazing Willie family. It's awesome. Yeah, it's the best. It, I, honestly, it really does feel like a family. It really does. Totally, totally. I mean, this industry, as you know, is... Um, it's tough, it's competitive. And so you need people in your corner that are going to be supportive. 100%. Um, and, you know, are, are straight up with you about what's going on. Um, mm -hmm. 
So I, I feel like Wilhelmina is that through and through. I love our team. Yeah, and you have also, I mean, you not only have all the contacts, but you also have kind of, I can imagine, have been through this phase where you needed to prove yourself too. So you have that element where you can relate not only to the team, but also to the girls, right? Because modeling is the same thing. You're proving yourself day in, day out. And then finally you get to this place where you have some sort of like prestige, right? Totally, totally. Yeah. I mean, for me, I'm, I'm 27. Um, but like I said, I've been scouting since I was like 18, 19. I knew wow. I, wanted, I wanted to do this. And yeah. um, looking back on, on the models that, you know, I, I scouted at the beginning and then the models that I um, scout now, there is a difference in the fact that, you know, the models that I feel confident um, about scouting now are models that um, have longevity in this industry and can actually make a career with, with modeling, which is what we're looking for at Wilhelmina. I mean, there are so many models out mm -hmm. there nowadays, so many agencies. And, um, you know, what, what we're known for and how we're structured is, okay, we can find a teenage girl and, you know, we can represent her until she's a mother, a grandmother. Yes. Um, so, you know, we're, we're always looking for that, for that longevity, you know, the classical beauty, which you obviously fit into, but then something that has something that's a little bit more interesting. And mm -hmm. um, of course, nowadays, it's all about the personality and what you can do outside of modeling too. Yeah. That was actually one of my biggest questions. So you answered that really well is, is <laughs> what, um, not only just what you are looking for, but what agencies are looking for. And you're, you're totally right. Like that longevity is a huge element in that. Right. Um, one yeah, of the I biggest mean, question. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I was just going to briefly say, you know, there are definitely some agencies out there that, um, that look for certain looks, you know, where, where a model might be able to do some runway shows and some editorial for, two three years but then mm -hmm. after that you kind of see them leave the industry which mm -hmm. um is not really what we are looking for yes we have girls that do the runway and editorial but we want them to be able to to translate um into into some of those clients that that are in more commercial money space as well right mm -hmm. that's how you end up making money too and this is what i tell girls who message me and ask me like you know what's the financial situation is like the ideal model is someone who can do everything and kind exactly. of like mold herself to the commercial one day and then hire fashion another so yeah yeah, yeah. a little it's bit totally of everything fun. versatility is important yeah totally um so when you are scouting and i i guess this is like a two-part question what age are you looking at, like what's the ideal age to get scouted and start a career and also like what are some of the standard things that you are looking for for a girl that you're trying to bring on to an agency yeah um quickly i just see my mom commented how do i get signed mom you're sorry you don't <laughs> <No worries. laughs> hi mom um, i thought that was funny but yeah i mean i think that the fashion industry is obsessed with youth especially the 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 casting directors that are the ones that put um, new faces on the top runway shows. I mean, they're looking for girls that are around uh, 18 or so. So for me, I, you know, will look at girls as young as 13, 14, but um, there's really not too much we can do as far as development wise, pushing them to clients until mm -hmm. they grow into themselves a little bit more 16, 17, and then we can make a plan um about you know are you going to take a gap year for college where you can really focus on modeling or, or are you going to do online school or how are we going to figure out this uh situation where you can devote time um to modeling which is why i'd say you know around the 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 late teens is a mm -hmm. good time to start and um however you know clients are just looking for girls that um you know, that align with their brand and that are healthy and aspirational. And so if you're 27 and you, yeah. um, you know, take care of yourself and you have proportions that, that the clients are looking for yeah. and great personality, 
I mean, hey, like we we just signed a 27 year old girl yesterday, and and there's there are girls that are older than that too. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, I hate to put it in a box because there there are there's so much room for for growth and inclusion in the industry. But mm-hmm. I will say the majority of models that I look for are like mid to late teens. Um, yeah. So that you know, so we can start them and develop them. But it makes sense because I think I also started very young. I started when I was like 12, 13, not like wow. modeling, but I did like commercials and stuff like that. Right. Um, but the, the part of that that I loved is that I still had all the time to be a teenager and do my high school. And um, at the same time, you know, I was building, you know, parts of my lifestyle that have led me into my career today. And like, doing little photo shoots here and there. So it was really nice to kind of like have the combination of the two. Totally. I mean, we yeah. value education so much as, yeah. as students, all of us at Wilhelmina, you know, we're educated and we don't think it's absolutely necessary to take a girl out of school um, no. or, and ruin her, her childhood or her no. years where, you know, maybe she'll look back in 10 years and like, oh my gosh, I was traveling all around the world and was so working long days and was so stressed when, you know, she could be at her prom um, mm-hmm. and, you know, hanging out with her friends on the weekends. You know, we, 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 we value that time and the teenage mm-hmm. years and education. Um, so, you know, but like I said, the industry does have a bit of an obsession with youth. And so we, we do usually start girls um, in their mid to late teens and roll them out from there. Okay, good to know. And what, what would you say about height? Because that's another question that a lot of people like to ask is like, is yeah. height still, you know, one of those deal breakers? Or is it something that agencies are more or less, like easier about? Yeah, so, um, You know, Wilhelmina, we have always been, since day one, uh, since Wilhelmina Winnie Cooper started the agency, we've been all about diversity and inclusion, and we've always had models of all sizes. Mm -hmm. But nowadays, with the world and the industry being more inclusive, um, we're we're much more open to different sizes. And it's not just us. You see it at other agencies as well. I will say the majority of girls that we do sign are, you know, that five nine to five eleven range. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, one a couple of our top girls um, that are based in New York right now that are working all the time for, you know, top beauty brands and Victoria's Secret. Um, like we have Hajin who's who's five four, yeah, five, five. That's and, true. It's a great um, example, actually. She's, she's an awesome example. And the thing with her is why I think she does um, so well at her height is one, because she has the proportions, you know, she's still, she's still proportionate, um, which is what clients look for. But then the personality is major. That girl mm-hmm. walks into a room, you want to be her friend, you're going to laugh, you're going to smile. Um, She is an artist, so she has, you know, things going on outside of modeling that make her interesting and, you know, a a creative person to be around, like you're inspired by that energy. Mm -hmm. Um, She's got such a unique look too, you know, she's Korean, she's got these freckles and this bleach blonde hair. Um, So, you know, it's different and it's unique and it's something that inspires us as agents and in turn, you know, clients have latched onto her. So, you know, she's a good example. Um, There's another girl that I scouted on TikTok last summer, Jessica. Oh, amazing. This was one of my questions too. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Who who she's five, uh, five, six, five, seven. I scouted her, I think, in July. In August, she moved to New York. You know, this was during COVID, but she has been busy working with um, a variety of clients from editorial to advertising jobs and beauty jobs. So, um, you know, we there definitely are exceptions to that 5'9", five, 5'11 five, yeah. rule. It's, it's much more open now. I will say, though, that with the height, I, I touched on it, but proportions are still so, so important. Yeah. You have to be it able seems to like you got to have like all height, like you need to be the exception, like all the other elements have got to be there. That's what I always say is like, totally. you've got to have the personality. You've got to have that extra like mm, to like get in if your totally. height is a little bit shorter. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And I think um, at times that's why you see girls like, like Hajin, um, 
you know, really thriving. And you think of Victoria's Secret, you know, I'm just gonna mm -hmm. use this as an example, because this is a brand that she's been working with. Yes. Recently. You think of Victoria's Secret, you know, it's, it's everyone's dream job. And girls who traditionally maybe um, fit that Victoria's Secret mold are not getting that job over Hajin because she is so, you know, she is, she's so genuine in who she is, but she's also aware um, I have to walk into this casting and, and I have to nail it because there are, there are yep. other girls who have, um, have things that I, I don't, but what, what, um, makes her even, uh, you know, you know, any day a client's going to pick her, um, over, over a, a five, 10, um, girl with a perfect body who doesn't have a personality, you know, right. you, clients want you on set uh for eight ten twelve hours a they day. want you to be pleasant and they totally. want to have a good time that's like that's not just what books but also what keeps you being booked and rebooked 100%. i feel like 100 yeah. yeah i mean it's awesome to to get the casting to get the job get the option get the confirmation do the job but then you know you want to keep working with that client and um you know that's where where the money comes in yeah and, uh the relationships and how you as a model build your brand too. you know other clients seeing oh she's consistently working for our competitor maybe we should try and work with her because she's in totally the that brand yeah. you see all the same girls in e-com doing all the same e-coms it just yeah, yeah. it's a totally. trickle effect for sure um okay. speaking of tiktok yes. and instagram and covid and everything yes. um this is actually like question of the hour. I feel like this was the most asked question ever, but um, <laughs> how, how are you signing girls during COVID? Like how can people start a career during COVID? Is it TikTok? Is it social media? Is it online applications? Like what is the best way to get that done? Yeah. So for me at the beginning of COVID, I was like, okay, I'm not traveling around um, I'm not at the agency, you know, for appointments. How am I going to find girls? And in the mm -hmm. past, I had had um, luck with with Instagram. Um, I had barely tried going on TikTok. Yeah, but that's what that's what we had at the time. Everyone was glued to their phone. Uh, yeah. We weren't going outside. Everyone was checking out TikTok. You know, looking on Instagram and. Um, so I had to do the same and we started, we did a couple of social media scouting campaigns. Um, and one in particular that we did on TikTok, I found a number of, I think I signed five models from, from that campaign and how that process wow. is, is um, you know, a number of them I just saw, on, I either saw on my For You page or they used a hashtag that we were using at the time, or they saw the, um, they saw the the campaign on their for you page and decided to submit on our website. So, I mean, for me, I prefer when people, uh, even if I find someone on, on Instagram or TikTok, I still prefer for them to. I ask them to submit online most yeah. most of the time, just because our on online submission form is very thorough and it gives me all of the information that I need to mm -hmm. then go to my team. Um, if I find you know, this person has potential. Yeah. So I would say, yes, now, nowadays in COVID times, if you can, one, um, take good digitals in natural light and submit them on our site, you know, that's probably the easiest way for you to get noticed. Um, you know, a lot of people think that I'm, I, I may be on social media all day looking for new models, but actually right. that is very far from what right. I, <laughs> I am. I am on my email and on Zooms and on my phone, uh, you know, doing, doing calls um, all day. So people who rely on, you know, posting photos and hashtagging Willie Scouts, will mm -hmm. that pop up in my feed? Yes, maybe I'll see it, but um, I would definitely say submitting online with, you know, like I said, good digitals and natural light um, yeah. is key. And I think you, you probably have a video on YouTube about taking Oh, I do. I use yeah. that Wilhelmina application all the yes. time. I can probably even pull it up now, but it's so easy to use. And yeah, um, yeah I, I always tell the tell um aspiring models the same thing just because it like it gives all your stats it allows you to submit like four photos 
Yep. And it's just more of a professional way to go about it, in my opinion, rather than slide into like a model scout or an agent's DMs on Instagram. Right. I mean, I will say I have like hundreds of DMs that oh, I no. <laughs> it's it's fine. The thing is, is though, like I said, I um, it's not always my priority to go through right. the the DMs, and I yeah. but I do check every single submission that comes from the site. So uh, that's that amazing is where to I hear. would definitely say check check that out. Okay, that's really good news. I yeah. that was definitely one of the questions that came through. I didn't put it in, but yeah, yes. people were like, "Do they actually check every application yes. that comes through?" Yeah, every single one, every single one. I mean, it may take a couple weeks um, for us to get through, you know, uh, for us to go through the, the applications. But yes, I mean, if we if we if someone submits, we're gonna see it and we're gonna review it and. Um, you know, I think that a lot of people uh, want to hear, I know a lot of people want to hear back from us and hear, you know, maybe con some, some constructive criticism. Mm -hmm. um, but really, we only have time to reply to the people who we think have. have of course. Mm -hmm. Of course. So what's like, what would you say is the longest that someone should wait to hear back? I would say like the longest is like a month. Um, That's what I would say too. I mean, okay. for, for me, I go through my, I go through the submissions within two or three days, but sometimes I'm on a trip or I'm on vacation or, right. or something else. And if it might something be comes up. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. So if it's a case of um, someone submits they're not exactly what you're looking for. Um, this has come up in the past too, is like, when should I resubmit? Because a lot of the times it takes someone two or three times, you know, to be ready or to get through to an agency, not just Wilhelmina, but just an agency in general. How right. long should they wait to like resubmit? Right. For me, um, you know, this might sound kind of crazy, but I remember every single submission. I mean, and when people submit multiple times, um, I, I remember if they've submitted before, mm -hmm. um, I would say wait six months to a year um, okay. from, from when you submit, because at that point, maybe you've grown into yourself a little bit more. Maybe you got a different haircut or, um, maybe just your look at that time is something that we, we don't have and we're looking for, um, you know, there are there are a number of people who will submit weekly and yep. <laughs> um you know some some even more and you know it's 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 definitely showing persistence mm -hmm. but um nothing changes in a week guys no, exactly sorry exactly yeah. exactly so um you know and and at the end of the day too like i see so many models that are potential models that submit that they're beautiful you know mm -hmm. there's i can't really point anything out um that's quite wrong with them future wise they just uh you know aren't quite what we are looking for at the time mm -hmm. um or what's or what's in demand with with clients too so you know and sometimes you know when it comes to longevity we like I touched on, we're looking for people who can have a career in modeling, whereas right. there, there are other agencies who are more interested in a little bit more of, of a, a quirky type of, of short term look. type of. Yeah. And so maybe that's an agency that's worth submitting to, um, you know, and they can pick you up for some special projects or something like that. Okay. that's really good to know. Mm -hmm. Um, Going back to what you said about what an agency is looking for at the time, yeah, I, I really want to touch on this because I feel like things have shifted in this past year, especially with the Black Lives Matter movement. You know, a lot of things have <laughs> been exposed and have yeah. woken. Like a lot of people have woken up, um, brands and clients included. How have you seen like a change within the industry? And if anything, like how has that impacted how agents take on girls or what kind of girls agents are signing right now? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I think even before the Black Lives Matter movement for the past few years, 
we've seen on top runways, advertising campaigns, um, clients using more and more um, models of color, mixed ethnicity models, um, ethnically ambiguous models. So, you know, when it comes to scouting, I've, I've been looking for that for a while. Okay. However, Good. I will say that with the Black Lives Matter movement, um, not as, it hasn't really affected me with scouting. I'm still scouting for all different skin colors and, and backgrounds. But I will say on the client's end, we have seen that our models of color have been picking up um, mm -hmm. more work. You know, maybe it's because clients um, realize, oh, you know, we didn't have this uh, representation before and we need more of it. Right. Or, um, you know, unfortunately, there are some situations where they, you know, I feel like people are just trying to check a box. Um, yeah. And, and uh, you know, at, but, but as, as consumers and as an agency, how are we supposed to know? Um, but I will, I will definitely say that, you know, the industry is more inclusive than ever, um, whether people want to believe it or not today, mm -hmm. you know, we are in the most inclusive time when it comes to yeah. different types of models, different skin tones of models, and it's only become, going to become more and more diverse. I agree. Yeah. Um, so yes, I mean, I, I'm looking, I'm still looking for, for black models, for um, mixed race models, but you know, at the same time, I'm still looking for, for white models too. Um, I, I, you know, as an agent, as a scout, we cater to, to the fashion and beauty clients and we can do our, um, our best to sign a model and push, push, push them. Um, to clients and a lot of times they they listen to us they trust us yeah but at the same time you know the clients they have in their mind what what they want and so we have right. to be able to cater to their needs that makes sense mm -hmm. yeah it's nice to see i mean i've definitely noticed a difference in our industry and you know even if it has to be more so um you know pushing models of color and pushing that kind of look right now i would rather have that and and really make that statement than you know pretend like it's it's not happening so right uh, and i will nice I'll, make, I'll make one comment real quick i i um i think that a lot with the black lives matter movement um as an agency we support all models equally so mm -hmm. just because the black lives matter movement is going on we're not going to push a a black model over a white model or vice versa right uh, in, in any situation you know we leave it up to the client and what works for them however it is our job to have those options available for for the clients so totally. uh, and that's yeah. why why i'm always scouting for for different skin tones I think it's also important for anybody who is not in the industry or maybe who's an aspiring model to know that agents don't really choose who gets booked for what job. Like an agent can maybe have a hand in, in you know, saying like, oh, you know, this girl will be great for you because she's fun to work with or because she's worked with X and X client. But at the end of the day, it's like the clients and the brands who choose what faces are used. It's just right. up to the agency to be like, okay, this is our roster. This is this what is we can offer available. you. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Exactly. Um, okay. One more question in regards to submission um, that I also get so much, but it's, um, it's, a, it's in regards to international models and how to get signed and how to eventually make it to a city like, like New York if you're not American. Yeah. So for Wilhelmina, we have uh, offices in the United States and we have an office in London. Um, if you are American uh, or if you're a U.S. citizen, you know, I definitely say submit to to our U.S. Uh, offices. And, yeah. you know, we just talked about that submission process. We'll get yeah. back with you if we're interested. If you are in Europe, um, I would say, although we have this Brexit situation going on, oh, I would no. say submit to our London office. Um, you know, with our, not to get too political, but it's been very difficult to get um, visas for international models uh, to come and work in the US for the past few years. So when it comes to you know, whether you are European, uh, 
uh, African, um, Asian, you know, you come from, from outside the U.S. and you're trying to get a work visa, well, um, the process is that you have to work in other international markets to prove that you are a model with an extraordinary ability. That's actually the name of the visa. Well, that, I have uh, an O-1, so I know okay, the whole process so you know. myself, but I'm right. from Canada, so I think it's a little bit right it's a little bit easier but it, yeah but you can but the thing is is that in canada too like there are fashion markets there's you mm -hmm. know there's a little bit of I'm, I'm sure when before you came to the u.s you were doing a little bit of work in canada and maybe you went to other markets yeah um, to to build up your material to get the o1 but if you're from a small country or even if you're not from a small country let's say you're from france and you know paris is close to you i would say um submit to an agency that is closer to you. You know, uh, yes, if we, if I get a submission from a model in, um, in Ghana, um, and I think that, that she could be a star, she has, you know, amazing skin, amazing proportions, uh, we Zoom with her, she's got great energy, well, that's great, but we still have this visa issue, and yeah. that's why, um, and, and, you know, and, and spending a lot of our time and our immigration team time on, on a girl who may or may not ever get a visa to come to the U.S., um, it's just not totally worthwhile to us. Mm -hmm. So if a model can submit to an agency that's closer to their hometown or home country, that is what I would, um, would suggest. Okay, true. And, yeah, it, like going back to the time and money thing, like it is a huge investment for an agency, Obviously, over time, once you start working, like the model pays it back and, you know, it all evens out. But in the beginning, when an agency finds a girl, especially when she's foreign and she comes into the U.S., you know, that's a big investment that they put up right. and put into the girl. So that totally makes sense. Right. And it's not just it's not just the. Uh the visa it's it's you know okay she's gonna we got the visa then it comes to flights and accommodations yeah. and, and model so apartment we, <laughs> exactly and so we are we're investing a lot up front but let's say you know we we found this unknown face in ghana honestly it's going to be three plus years until she gets to the u.s and so we have to really think is this worth our yeah. time um so yes if you're an american a u.s citizen apply to uh, Wilhelmina in the US. If you are in Europe, apply to Wilhelmina London. If you're outside of there, um, you can go to models.com or other uh, agency directories and, and a quick Google search, maybe find a agency that's, uh, that does international placement that's, that's close to your home country. Yeah, and I also would say like, if you, are you know from a country where you speak a different language oftentimes it is easier to have that mother agency whether you know you stay with them or or whatnot but it's it's often easier to have that other agency to deal with the communication rather than you as a model in a foreign country try and communicate with you know a, an american agency it's just a lot easier i think would you right, say totally and a lot of times you know like we said a lot of these models are are young teenagers and they don't know about immigration and visas and and how all of this works so to find a professional in in the industry that knows um what they're talking about and can potentially get you to to be an international model uh, you know that makes the most sense yeah cool do you have any other tips that you would want to give to an aspiring model before I like lead us into our final question? <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, a lot of times I, I, I get asked about submissions and I know you've, you've chatted about it, but, yeah. um, you know, how can you stand out in a submission? Uh, you really need to take digitals in good light. Um, mm -hmm. I know, I know, you know, you might want to put on a Snapchat filter or something else, uh, you know, use flash. I prefer natural light, um, no harsh shadows. I mean, you're in beautiful light right now. I'm in pretty good Take a screenshot, right people. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, 
Oh, hey, Megan. Oh, she's You're so getting so much love. <laughs> I, I love this so much. I, like, and everyone loves Franklin. Down <laughs> and just scroll through. Oh, my gosh. Anna Paula. Wow. Uh, I am so happy to see everyone here. Uh -huh. Um, Bye. <laughs> Oh gosh, I lost my train of thought. Oh, the natural light. Smiley. Yeah, natural light, guys. Um, we want to see what you look like. You know, if you have acne right now, don't cover it up. Let me see. Let me see if, you know, oh, we should great work point. With it. Thank you for bringing that up. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you have um, something that we, we chatted about is, um, you know, stretch marks or acne or, yes, yes, um, yes. you know, don't, don't, don't put filters on this stuff. Don't, uh, don't edit it. Don't face tune. I want to see exactly how you are the blank canvas, because here's the thing. Let's say you do send me a face tuned photo, um, which I can likely tell if it's face tuned or not. Um, the next step is for me to Zoom with you or meet you in person. And if you don't look like that, then you're not going to, we're not gonna offer you um, representation. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's best to just be honest up front. We sign girls, you know, that have acne, who, you know, yeah. portions aren't, aren't quite industry standard, but we think that there's something interesting there and we work with that. So um, just show me, show me who you are. I love that. Yeah. And I think it's so important too. like, you've got to be yourself and you've got to submit as you are. And nowadays, you know, things are so much more inclusive as we were talking about earlier. So you might as well go for it and see 100%. what happens. Okay, last question. Yes. And this is not related to modeling, but oh gosh. Um, I also have a lot of people who are just interested in being in the industry and doing what you do. So how would yeah. you go about wanting to become a model scout or work at an agency? Oh my gosh. Um, <laughs> this is the hard one, right? <laughs> it is hard because I do get asked this question every so often. Um, from, from the scouts that I know, everyone kind of has their different, uh, different path to being a scout. Um, I think that every scout should have an understanding of the different facets of the modeling industry. So uh, if, if you're interested in being a scout or an agent or working in the agency side of things, um, go look on agency websites and look at their models and look at the portfolios and look at their features and, and try to get an eye for proportions. Um, you know, learn about the, the commercial side of the industry with catalog and smiley ecom um yeah. beauty the different types of of beauty clients within the industry and what they look for um you know understanding a model's trajectory so maybe you go to wilhelmina.com and you see that we have uh, Bianca Balti on there and you see that she has these Harper's Bazaar covers and L covers and Vogue covers and all these Dolce and Gabbana campaigns. Well, do your research and figure out how, what, what was her trajectory? How did she get to that point? Or look at a girl like you and, and go back and, and see how did, how did she start? Um, you know, what is, what is her trajectory? So understanding um, what a model looked like and, and how she is when she starts and then how that changes over time is, is important. Just doing as much research as, as possible. I think also having um, experience and an eye as a photographer is extremely important because yeah. for me, when I travel and when I meet models, um, you know, nine out of 10 times, I'm going to take a photo of them and see how they naturally photograph, if they're naturally photogenic, if they take direction well. Um, and, you know, I think if you have an eye for photography, that helps you when it comes to organizing portfolios and setting models up with certain photographers to develop their books. Um, and, you know, imaging models in a, in a certain way that aligns with their, um, their brands. So I think uh, doing your research on different modeling agencies and models and their trajectories, uh, having some, some experience in photography. Um, 
uh, you know, we talk, it's, it's all about networking and relationships. True. So you have to be a, a, a good communicator and um, be able to put yourself out there as an agent or scout and say, you know, hey, I'm interested in working with you, um, you know, and, and being comfortable and, and confident and not, and enough with yourself to, to put yourself in that situation. And then as far as like, you know, maybe getting an internship or getting a job at an agency. Um, you know, for me, I think LinkedIn is a great place yeah. to, to, to reach out to people. Uh, you know, you can try Instagram DMs. Um, I would, I would, you know, say it's probably good if you have some experience in fashion or or beauty I don't think you're going to get an internship right off the bat you know your first internship at a modeling yeah. they, they want to see that you have some type of experience um and or degrees so uh yeah those are those are a few things that I I would say to someone who wanted to potentially have my job or um or an agent's job a lot of a lot of it too is an eye it's just training your eye so which yeah. is why i say to to look at other agency websites and you as a model too like i'm sure you your eye has been trained you oh, know yeah. being on sets with other girls about what works in the industry and what and what doesn't yeah um, even sometimes i'll be walking down the street and i i will see you know someone and be like oh my gosh i wonder what she's gonna look like five years from now right. when her face is thinned out a little bit and right uh when she's matured a little bit and you know the possibilities there it, it is really interesting you do get that eye after a while Totally, 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 totally. Yeah. Um, and I think that, you know, we, we keep going back to this talk about inclusivity and diversity. Um, it's so, there's so much beauty in, in the world now. And um, I think that the more types of beauty that you're exposed to, and me as a scout, you know, traveling worldwide internationally i'm able to see different types of beauty and um so just being being open-minded of of what um others consider beautiful because you know everyone has their i their their type and yeah who they're drawn to um which is why some models are good for some clients and one and, and why they're not great for others um but just having an open mind about uh, different types of beauty is important I love that. And that's, that is, you know, the beauty of our industry is that it is so, you know, specific to each person and each client has a different eye for what they want and taste and preference, but there is at the end of the day room for everyone. And yeah. I just, I really hope that going forward, it's going to become more and more inclusive and diverse. And um, yeah, that was a great answer. I think that that's going to be helpful for a lot of people. <laughs> good, 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 um, good. Thank you so much. Of course. I, I, I really appreciate time. your time. It was fun, girl. And I'm sorry that I didn't get to like scroll through everyone's questions, but I appreciate everyone being here too. I feel famous. Yeah, thank <laughs> you guys so much for all the love. I really appreciate you guys for joining. Yeah. Um, go and follow Franklin and keep tabs on him because he is just going to grow even bigger than he already is today. Um, and I'm going to be posting this on my IGTV. I'm also going to be posting this on YouTube. So if you guys want to watch it again, listen back to some of his answers, they will be in both places. So perfect. Thank you. Thank you guys. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.